Hi guys, I'm Aluxmo, and I'm sure that all of us at some point have wondered what would we do if we wrote the Pokemon anime, and there are tons of things that come with that, writing different stories, writing different characters, but I think one of the most interesting things you could do is pick what Pokemon each character would have. So in this video, I'm going to create new teams for every region Ash has visited. And this is just how I would do it if I was writing the anime. Please let me know in the comments how you would do it. I would love to hear what you have to say. And with that, uh, let's get right into the video. So before I start, there are just two rules I want to talk about. Now the first rule is that in pretty much every region, Ash has always had a starter Pokemon in the past. but. I am not going to be going by this rule. These are the teams that I want for him. If I give him starter Pokemon, I do. If I don't give him starter Pokemon, I don't. I really don't care. The other thing is I don't care about types. If I want to give him six ground types, I'm going to give him six ground types. I don't care about the type of these Pokemon. I'm putting them on his team if I think they fit him. With all that out of the way, I'll get into his first team, which is his Kanto team. So for his Kanto team, he will have Pikachu, Ivysaur, Charizard, Wartortle, Muck, and Mr. Mime. So first up is Charizard that I want to talk about, and obviously I could not change this. He is one of the best Pokemon of the original series, so Charizard will of course stay. The other Pokemon I kept from his original team is Muck. I think it has a really interesting personality and battle style, and I wish he got to battle with it more. So in this version of his team, it would stay with him, throughout once he caught it and like throughout Kanto, Orange Islands, etc. And he would use its unique battle style to win a lot of battles. Now for the changes, I have Wartortle and Ivysaur. I decided to evolve both of these just because I prefer their middle stages to their previous stages and I think they could get a lot more development if they evolved. I didn't fully evolve them because I think they might be like too big and they would have to change their battle style and maybe even personality, but just evolving once I think would give these Pokemon a lot more development. And the final new addition is Mr. Mime, which is probably surprising to a lot of you, but I think it had a very interesting battle style when Ash battled with it in Journeys Episode 7. So if Ash caught him in the original series and used attacks like Barrier and even Psychic, I think it would be really interesting to watch him battle with Mr. Mime. So that's why I'm having him catch it here. Next up is Johto, where he will have Pikachu, Heracross, Bayleaf, Typhlosion, Croconaw, and Dunsparce. Alright, let me explain, because that might have been a little surprising to some of you. So, for Pokemon that he will keep, I am of course keeping Heracross. I think it was a very, very interesting Pokemon, and I just want him to actually use it. He didn't use it too much in Johto, so in this version of his team, it will be on his team the entire time, until he'll use it in a lot of battles. Next up are his starters, Bayleaf, Typhlosion, and Croconaw. I decided to evolve some of these just because I think I could give them more development if they evolved. Cyndaquil especially could have done a lot more if it evolved, and it did end up evolving in Sinnoh, but this time it'll actually evolve twice in Johto, and could even be his ace of the series. As for the reason I chose for Croconaw to evolve, it would still be able to be relatively small and keep its personality, and it would actually let Totodile battle a lot more, and just be more relevant to his team. And the final new member is Dunsparce, which I'm sure surprised a lot of you, but he's actually tried to catch a Dunsparce twice before and failed, so I think he should actually have one. It's a very unique Pokemon, and it kind of just screams ass to me with how random it is, so I think he could definitely make it work as his underdog of the team. For Hoenn and the Battle Frontier, his main team would be Pikachu, Sceptile, Swellow, Glalie, Flygon, and Absol. So quickly, I'll just talk about Swellow, Glalie, and Sceptile, and these are the three I decided to keep from his previous team, mainly just because they're my three favorites from that team, I think they have interesting personalities and battle styles, and I think they could do a lot if they were kept, so that's why these three would be kept. Sorry for any of you fans of Corefish or Torkoal, but I thought these three were the best of his own team. The first new addition will be Flygon. A lot of fans have said they want Ash to catch this Pokemon, and it just makes sense. It is a very strong Pokemon, and it would be fun to see him battle with it. I think there could be some great aerial battles with it. And it's also a Dragon type, which would be his first at this point. And finally, I chose Absol, because I think this catch would be good for Ash's development. 
Ash could start off thinking Absol was causing disasters, like everyone does, but eventually learned that Absol was just warning people, and once he got close with Absol, he would catch it. Kinda like what Go did, I guess, but this would be like 20 years earlier. But I just do think that because of this, Absol could really fit Ash, and it could become a powerhouse on his team. Next up is Sinnoh, and the team I gave him is Pikachu, Torterra, Infernape, Weasel, Gibble, and Gallade. So as for Torterra, Infernape, Weasel, and Gibble, I decided to keep these four mainly just because they're my favorite of his Sinnoh team. The only differences I would make is that Torterra would actually be good, and he would probably catch Gibble a bit earlier. I just didn't decide to evolve Gibble, just because I did like its battle style as a Gibble, and I feel like it might be harder to use that battle style if it evolved. And Ash already has a fully evolved ground dragon type in Flygon now, so he doesn't really need Garchomp. The new addition is Glade. I just think this Pokemon really fits Ash. After I saw Rinto battle with its Glade, I think it's just an interesting battling Pokemon. It would have a lot of cool fighting type moves, and it would be a very strong member for one of Ash's strongest teams. So next up is Unova, and I made a lot of big changes to this team. Now I'm going to be giving him Pikachu, Duat, Levani, Palpitoad, Crocodile, and Zoroark. I know this probably is confusing a bunch of you, so let me just explain why I chose these Pokemon. So of course, Crocodile was Ash's main ace of his Unova team, so I had to keep it. It's a great Pokemon, so it is still here. The next Pokemon are Palpitoad and Levani, and these are some of Ash's best Pokemon from Unova, but they were so underused that they hardly got any great battles. So making these be on Ash's main team without rotating any Pokemon would really give these Pokemon great development, we could see a lot of Levani's great battle style, and even more of Palpitoad that really never got to battle. And Palpitoad has some amazing potential, I don't even think it has to evolve to be a great battler. So I think both of these Pokemon would be great additions to his team. Next up would be Duat, his one starter from this region, and I did decide to evolve Oshawa just into Duat because I think in this stage it could still have a similar battle style to Oshawa, and I just think this would make Oshawa more battle, give it more development and more screen time, and just make it a stronger Pokemon overall. The final Pokemon is Zoroark, and I think it would be interesting to see Ash use some of its strategies with the Illusion ability, which is something that we've really never seen Ash do. It would be very interesting to see how Ash uses this Pokemon, and I think it would be a great addition to his team. Next up is Kalos, and I'm giving him Pikachu, Mega Lucario, Halucha, Gudra, Noivern, and Aegislash. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Where is Greninja? Alright, alright, let, let me explain. I really like Ash Greninja. It has a great arc, but the Bond phenomenon is just kind of dumb in my opinion. So that's why instead I'm going to be giving him Mega Lucario. Lucario will have the exact same role in the story, the same development, the same arc, and same everything as Greninja. But this way, He'll get a Lucario, which everyone has always wanted for him, and he'll also get Mega Evolution, which makes a lot more sense to, the, the, to me than the Bond Phenomenon. Now, I know it's going to be very controversial. Please feel free to disagree in the comments. I respect your opinions as long as you respect mine. I just think Ash Greninja would make a lot more sense as Mega Lucario. Again, that's just me. Please feel free to disagree. Now for the other team members. Halucha, Gudra, and Noivern are really my favorites from his Kalos team that aren't Greninja, but uh, we just talked about Greninja. <laughs> but basically for Halucha, Gudra, and Noivern, I just decided to keep them because I think they have great stories. Really the one change I would make is that Noivern should have some more development episodes once it's evolved and give it a couple more wins. But other than that, these Pokemon are pretty much perfect as they were. Finally is Aegislash. We've seen that Ash is able to fight with a sword and a shield with his Farfetch'd and later Surfetch'd, so I think this would be an interesting Pokemon for him to use, and he would have to learn a lot of interesting strategy, and maybe it could even have a rivalry with Sawyer's Aegislash. Next is Alola, where he will have Pikachu, Rowlet, Lycanroc, Incineroar, Naganoddle, and Melmetal. And I know what you're thinking, this is the exact same team that he had before but there actually is a difference. The difference here is that Naganoddle is actually going to be on his team. He's never going to release it, or at least not the first time, and it'll battle as a Poipul and evolve into Naganoddle under his ownership. Maybe it'll even evolve during the Ultra Necrozma arc. 
I just think we really missed out on seeing this Pokemon evolve and battle alongside Ash. It just came back during the Alola League and was super strong, but we never got to see that development, so that's why I want that to be on screen. And finally is his Journeys team, where I will give them Pikachu, Cinderace, Surfetched, Dracovish, Greedent, and Frostmoth. And I decided to give him all Galar Pokemon, just because if there are any Pokemon from other generations I wanted him to have, well, I already gave them to him in those previous series. So that's why I didn't give him any Gen 1, Gen 4, etc. Pokemon. So let me explain which picks. So first up are Dracovish and Surfetch. These Pokemon he already has in Journey, so logically I decided to keep them as I love Surfetch's development. And even though we haven't seen Dracovish too much, I think it can have a very fun personality and battle style. So I decided to keep both of them. Cinderace is here next, and this would be his partner Pokemon in the place of Lucario. I really do think it fits him, regardless of being a starter or not. It's just a very fun, energetic, and fast Pokemon that I think will fit Ash's battle style. As for Go, I would probably just have him use Inteleon instead of Cinderace. But that's mainly just so Ash can have Cinderace. And next up is Greedent, which is definitely a weird choice, but I think its fun personality would be very interesting for an Ash Pokemon. It would be a very wacky choice, which Ash has some of those. And overall, I think it could have a very fun battle style, using a lot of moves like Counter and even Belly Drum would just be a very fun moveset for it to have. And the final Pokemon I'm going to give him is Frostmoth. He would catch it as a Snom, which could really do no damage, and it would suck as a Snom, but he would train it and eventually evolve it into a Frostmoth and become one of its his most loyal battlers. And I think that this development from Snom to Frostmoth would just be very interesting to see, and that's the main reason I decided to choose it for his team. So there you go, those are my versions of Ash's teams, and I'm actually going to have a video coming out pretty soon detailing my versions of Ash's companions teams, so get ready for that. Other than that, if you did like this video, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and comment down below how you would do Ash's teams, and what you thought of my Ash's teams. Other than that, I will see you in my next video.